we're gonna go ahead and do a little live coding, which everybody who has ever done a presentation has always been warned, never ever do live coding. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna style this form using SAS. This is the SAS Playground, um, which is pretty fun to play with. So uh, to get started, let's establish some uh, basic variables. So let's make font. Um, and this will be important later. Anybody got a color they like? No, nope. I'll just pick one. And then let's make a gray color. Do straight sevens. Establish a margin. Font ratio, again, this will be important in a second, of uh, 0.15. And establish a column width for, for doing some responsive stuff later. So there we go. Uh, as you can see, we, we don't actually have any output yet. We've just defined some variables. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy in here just a, a function and a mix in we can use. So uh, I've pasted in that math power function we used before. And then font scale. So uh, let's go ahead and create a, uh, a mix in. So we'll do um, at mix in. And uh, we'll make this one call. And then do all the basic stuff you use for um, responsive design. So we'll do uh, display block, float left, and a padding of uh, say 0 and 15 pixels. We've now created a mix in for that. And then uh, let's actually get some output. Let's put in a base box sizing. Uh, which is going to be important. So for all objects, box sizing is border box. And we have output. So now this is this is where it's going to start actually getting interesting because we've we've got our our basic data. This is sort of our fundamental rules for what our site's going to look like established. So let's start by in the body element. We're going to set uh, a universal font. And just noting over here that it's filling in the variables, it's handling all of that stuff as we go. All right. So I'm going to create a, an extend only. And we'll note that this is not going to actually produce any output until we extend it. And then do the font. Weight is bold. Font weight, and then let's do an if statement. Um, is not equal to font. We're going to do um, family is. Currently, header font is based on font. If we ever decide to make the header font different, this will support that. Um, so it's a bit of a thinking ahead prospect. Color and uh, margin not on the sides. All right, so now we're actually going to create all of our header tags. Uh, and since it's one through six, we'll use a for loop. I from one through six. H uh, pound brackets and then to make it literally place itself in the content. And we're going to extend header. Use that mix in we created earlier. And 
this will create both the extension of one through six that picks up the boldness, the color, all of that stuff, and then also outputs all of our header sizes uh, getting progressively bigger by 15%. And down here we now have nice pretty colors. Let's do a paragraph, just to margin. So uh, let's build ourselves some responsive framework. So let's do four from one through 12, make a 12 column grid. Let's follow bootstrap conventions. Include the column mixin we created earlier. Um, and then set the width to uh, would be I times 100% divided by 12. We'll do the same thing inside a media query. Change it to small. All right, so now we have uh, 12 columns, 12 columns in a media query. Um, let's cover uh, links real quick. There's actually something I'd like to show you here. So create the anchor tag and do color. Play brand primary. And then uh, again, it's wanting something on the same level. So we'll do ampersand at hover. The ampersand will pick up the full definition of its parent and then place it there without a space. And we'll do color here of brand primary. This is the part I wanted to show you is that you can actually do math on hex values. So we'll do a dark color by taking 75% of the, the value. So we actually get a matching blue 25% darker. All right, so that covers sort of our basic framework of the site. Now let's meander on down here and start working with this form. Um, so let's hit the big stuff. The form tag is going to be uh, width 100% and uh, display block. And for safety, let's clear both. Just in case there's more stuff around it, let's handle the label. You'll notice I'm not nesting these things because they don't have to be nested. Make it all caps, make it gray. Let's include our font scale mix in. At negative one, make it 15% smaller width of 100%. And then our input will be likewise display block width 100%. Take a look over here. Uh, all of the fields are defined as fields, so let's start there. Um, and here's where we get into, we're going to actually extend Bootstrap rather than use Bootstrap. And uh, let's go ahead and add some margin as well. Because that is just too close together. All right, now because of the way we built our Bootstrap uh, stuff earlier, if I become you know, narrow here, uh, you can see that this is all behaving in a perfectly normal bootstrap fashion. When I get to a wider state, uh, I'm uneven down here. So let's override state and zip and give us a little bit of better construct here. Field and the field name are on the same level, so we'd need to use an ampersand dot state or it won't recognize it and steal these. And at the widest, let's make it uh, eight and four, and four and two when it's narrow. It seems about right for zip. And this will be, what did I say, four and two? So that creates uh, a bootstrap very, very rapidly. 
And uh, this is incredibly easy, easy to read. So instead of it being in the source code that this is four columns, this is eight columns, what I can look directly in my CSS and say, oh, well, fields are 12 columns at extra small and six columns at small. And I don't have to worry about the question of, is that correctly built into my code? Anything that's a field will pick up that uh, as it's supposed to. Uh, 